Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today I'm finally getting to review my little Anakin. This is uh, a watch from NTH. Uh, I bought it from uh, Watch Gauge. Shout out to my good friend John Keel. If you missed the video, I'll, I'll put a link in the description where I, I looked at one of the best place, well, the best place to buy micro brands. So this was a purchase of him, and how this came about was. Well, he actually lent me his, his own personal knacking, and um, I just fell in love. I, I had no intention of buying it. It was one of those things where after a little while of trying it out, it really dawned on me what a amazing design it is. We'll get into a little bit about the history and, and, and the influences behind the design in just a moment. Uh, but of course, I have to do wristwatch check. And I'm wearing, uh, if this thing will focus, there we go. I'm wearing my darling little lion shark. I haven't worn this since Christmas, um, and I've kind of been putting off wearing it because I'm trying, <laughs> I'm babying it. Well, do you blame me? I mean, yes. So today, as we are discussing divers, I thought I'd wear it. So, uh, what is NTH? Well, a chap called Chris Vale, uh, who is a watchmaker, and I think he has several brands, but NTH, a brand specializing in history. In fact, its name, NTH, stands for or nod to history. So really, really cool concept. What made me pull the trigger on it, so to speak, well, uh, very fitting as it is deeply, deeply military inspired, um, was its slenderness, its size, its quality, and of course, it's really, really cool aesthetic and that mesmerizing blue. It is a homage, but it's not a homage just to one particular watch, as, as a lot of people uh, mistakenly thought, oh, it's a homage of the the uh, Pelagos or the um, Tudor Samaritan. Well, it is, but actually it's a homage to an entire age. It has a lot of influences, and as I go through all the, the components, you will see uh, that it's taken inspiration from a number of classic watches, and all of which I've reviewed on the channel. So having experience with all these watches has kind of made me appreciate this particular watch even more and, and what Chris Vell has done here, which is extremely clever. Uh, this, of course, is the no-date version. It's entirely stainless steel. In fact, let's just quickly get the uh, dimensions out of the way first. So the diameter is 40 millimeters. We got a height of, I'd, I'd say it's 11.5. Lug to lug we're looking at 47, just shy of 48 millimeters. And lug width is 20 millimeters. So for me, it is the perfect size for um, a dive watch. I, I just couldn't get over how slender and how well it wears. You, I will, I'll do a wrist shot in just a, a little while. Um, so let's talk about all the different components. Well. It's entirely stainless steel, as I've said. We have brushed sides, really beautiful, high polished, these beveled edges there, and then brushed at the top of the lugs. I think this is a brushed uh, stainless steel insert, which is actually loomed. So it is, of course, an automatic dive watch. The depth rating is a staggering 300 meters, actually. Let's just move the, um, the hands there so we can see a bit more detail on that dial. So we've got a screw down crown, uh, which is really nicely sized. It's, um, well, let's just discuss its influences right away. The, the crown really does remind me of the early, early Submariners, the very first Rolex Submariners, the, you know, references like the 6204, the 6200, the 6205, of course. The size, uh, in relation to the rest of the case, is very reminiscent of the, we must say, the early Tudor Submariners too. Uh, it's, it's also slightly sunken in uh, to the case. So it doesn't have crown guards, but it sits a little bit closer to the case in a wonderful little kind of notched uh, section. The case, to me, is extremely reminiscent of uh, the 60s Amiga Seamaster that, that I reviewed. If you remember, I took a look at the reference 1660324, credible dive watch. Again, the 60s Amiga were, of course, issued to the, uh, the British SAS. The dial is very like the Tudor Submariner, the Snowflake 
Submariners of the late 60s and into the early 70s. So I'm talking about references like the 9104, the 7016, the 7021, etc. A lot of people thought, oh, well, it's, it's very Pelagos-like. Well, the Pelagos, if you saw the review, has a chapter ring and the, the indices are, are buried or, or kind of half sunken into that chapter ring. Here, they're placed very like the, the uh, 60s and 70s. Tudor subs, they're done exquisitely well. I, I gotta say, uh, let me just get the uh, the pencil in here so I can point. I just wanna, I, I just wanna show you here the accuracy because look at the positioning of the markers and they're very three-dimensional. They're, they're really nice and large in size, but look at the accuracy, how equidistant they are from the minute markings. This shows a level of precision and quality. They are all perfectly, perfectly placed. We, of course, we have the snowflake hands, and this was a bit of a, a bone of contention uh, among some viewers when I did the unboxing. They just saw the snow, snowflake hands and they just wrote it off as a blatant one-to-one um, -one copy. It is not. There's so much going on in this watch. Of course, one cannot deny that snowflake hands are um, true inspired, but this whole watch is uh, 60s and 70s military diver watch inspired. So they had to go with something. I love the, the snowflake hands. Some people don't like it, but a slight Marmite effect. Functionally, they work tremendously well. I often wear this watch, and this sounds a bit weird, but I always wear a watch at night, and this has been a favorite because I have, a, I have a habit of waking up in the middle of the night. This thing, it, it, the, the loom is insane, absolutely insane. I'll say it now, it's the best loom I've ever, I ever had on the watch. It just stays, it has an incredible staying power. So we have C3 Superluminova included in the bezel. The snowflake hour hand just makes it extremely easy to distinguish it from the minute hand, which is what the whole purpose of its, um, the reasoning behind it, even in a, half asleep state I can decipher what time it is without even waking up and go go back to sleep and you know realize oh it's not time to get up it's only you know 4 30 or whatever <laughs> got another hour sleep um so yeah it's it's um very very functional I I love it now the hands are completely white from the very tip all the way to the end. Something that does differentiate it from, let's say the first generation Pelagos, which I think the, the hands are the most um, faithful to. Uh, but even then, the, the end of that, or, or closer to, to the center, the hands were blacked out. So this is slightly different. Now the dial itself is a beautiful matte blue. It's very like the Aquas Blue, uh, if you remember from, from my very, very early reviews, it's quite a subdued blue, but the blue in the um, bezel, and I must say the bezel is 120 click, and it's wonderfully responsive. It has a very secure feeling, little play. I mean, it, it kind of puts my squalor to shame a little bit. So very well done indeed. But that blue, that almost, God, I mean, it's a, it's a neon blue. At sometimes it's very dark when it reacts to light. It has a vivid, playful, lively kind of um, luster to it. In darker light, it looks almost like a sapphire blue. And then other times it's quite azzurro. It's, it's a playful, very summer style of blue. And I think it's definitely a nod to the uh, Marine Nationale uh, Tudors of the late 60s, in particular the 9411, which ran from about 69 to uh, 75, I believe. Very, very cool indeed. And it goes without saying, those watches are extremely lusted after, extremely desired, very collectible by collectors, and the, the prices reflect that. This, uh, I think, is very justifiably priced at uh, around the $600 mark. I struggle to think of any diver from the micro brand uh, world that can compete in terms of its quality and what it offers. We also get uh, drilled lug holes, which is fantastic. I mean, keeping with that tooltastic uh, theme. And one of my favorite features I, I, I mustn't forget is of course the loomed crown. I've never owned a watch with a loomed crown. It's even a different color from the loom on the main dial. Uh, and I just adore how Chris has incorporated the British military 
arrow into the T of NTH. Not only does it keep the logo symmetrical as we see at the 12 o'clock there, uh, but it's a nice, again, a, a really cool um, little acknowledgement of classic markings on military watches. So where does the name Nakin come from? Well, this particular watch was named in honor of a Swedish submarine being the Nakin sub watch. It uh, makes sense. But the word Nakin actually derives from Swedish uh, folklore. Apparently legend has it that it was a um, humanoid seafaring creature that would lure uh, its victims to death, drowning by playing a violin and uh, a little bit like the sirens in Greek mythology. Uh, shout out to my Swedish viewers uh, for um, educating me all about this. A really cool little nod uh, to, oh, again, nod to history, <laughs> of course. Now, the glass itself is sapphire, double-domed, anti-reflective sapphire. It's framed beautifully by the bezel. The bezel ever so slightly leans upwards and kind of continues the line of that uh, crystal. The edge of the bezel itself is a wonderful kind of cog style, which um, just lends for very good and secure grip, uh, breaking away from the, the, the watches it's homaging. The crown itself has a, uh, I would describe as a coin edge, very sharp edges to the lugs. I, I, I love the lugs. They, they curve down wonderfully, a little bit more aggressive than the lugs uh, on the Amiga Seamaster I mentioned earlier. We have the markings on the bezel, crisp white, that uh, contrasts beautifully to that blue. If we remove the uh, my Lucky Zulu, I have put it on my Lucky Olive Zulu just because I think it just works so well. And I apologize that, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, you never wear the, um, the bracelet it came on. To be honest, can you blame me? The Lucky Zulu works so well. The case back is just a very simple screw down case back with some basic information on it. Nothing fancy here and I think, um, uh, a little bit of a shame. It would have been nice to see an engraving or something, perhaps even uh, what would have been really cool to have the, a bit like how Amiga do with their um, hippocampus, to see the uh, the Swedish, the actual Nakin, or, or perhaps even the submarine, that would have been cool. Now, I should address the bracelet. The bracelet is absolutely fantastic. We get solid end links. All the links have screwed pins. Uh, which is really, really nice. We have a, a safety fold over, uh, which is uh, signed NTH and a double push button deployment. Unfortunately, we don't have a diver extension, but we do have micro adjustments there. It would have been nice to see a, a diver extension. I would have been even willing to pay a little bit more. Um, the bracelet itself is beautifully um, put together, very nicely machined. It's uh, completely brushed. There are no polished surfaces on it whatsoever. Um, it doesn't, uh, does it taper? I think it ta tapers ever so slightly. So let's discuss the movement a little bit. Well, inside we have the Miyota Calibre 9015. It operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour. The standard accuracy uh, out of the factory is about minus 10 to plus 30 seconds a day. Uh, I'm pleased to report the accuracy on this is about plus five, which is absolutely fantastic. So we have a unidirectional uh, winding central uh, rotor. The power reserve is 42 hours. It's a rock solid movement. I love the 9015. I've come to respect it and, and I've owned it many, many times. I know it well. I know how it behaves. I'll show you right now. We take out the crown. It is, of course, hackable. If I pop it back in, we have hand winding as well. So it's a 24 joule movement. It's been in production since 2009. However, I know it sounds fairly recent, but it is based on previous Miyota 8215. Uh, so it has all the reliability, the, the ease of, of being able to repair and service extremely affordably. And I couldn't think of anything better to go in this watch. Now, I must also mention that the watch does come on a very dark kind of navy uh, blue rubber strap. Uh, this is a beautiful um, vanilla scented natural rubber strap. Uh, so I, I haven't worn this yet. Um, I tend to wear rubber straps more so 
in uh, summertime and included is a little uh, smart pocket uh, to attach to your phone which I thought was really really cool but I've also got to mention the packaging it's it's very unpretentious I, I love the little slide out box here with the felt inside I, I love that you know it's small it's compact it's um, yeah, it's, it's just worthy to, to mention. So you get the complete package and, and I really appreciate that. So let's pop it on the wrist and see how this bad boy wears. On my tiny little six and a quarter inch wrist, it wears fantastically well. I love the, the way it wears. It's almost the perfect dive watch in terms of its scale and size. It's uh, large enough to be legible. Um, and yet it's um, small enough for my particular wrist. The weight is about 170 grams on the bracelet. Without the bracelet, we're looking at 90 grams. It's slender profile as well. It, it just, it makes it a pleasure to wear. It's not, I mean, look, I've even got it on a lucky, Zo my lucky Zulu strap, I should say. Um, so we've got added extra, you know, strap going on underneath, and yet it's still, is remarkably slender it's um actually it wears a bit like a dress watch which is quite peculiar uh, the only other watch that to me is similar to the way this one wears is the amiga cmos like the bond ones uh, etc its dimensions are perfect really really perfect and and refreshing to see you know especially in a, in a market oversaturated with with humongous dive watches so let's summarize the watch. So I think it goes without saying that this is an absolute winner. I love the design of it. I love uh, the case, uh, everything about it. I, I love the fact that you can get it in a variety of colors, uh, no date, date. It's taken everything from uh, the revered icons of the 60s and 70s and updated them with modern materials, but yet hasn't gone over the top. It's It's a very carefully considered interpretation of all these classics. I think Chris Vale has created an absolute couple of order. Actually, it reminds me of what Dan Henry, the, the um, legendary Dan Henry, has done with his recent releases. A watch made by somebody who really knows the classics and that knowledge is, has come into beautiful fruition uh, with, with these watches here. It's a carefully nuanced design and, and I adore it. The scale, the quality, the, everything is, is, is perfect. I had no QC issues with this whatsoever. And in fact, this I believe was one of the two left. Um, so I'm sorry guys, <laughs> I'm sorry guys if you can't get a hold of one. You can see why I had to get one. It's, it's tremendous fun for the money. I really can't afford a, a Tudor Submariner, but especially the, the highly regarded uh, military ones of the 60s. But I can get a little bit of that feeling and that fun. Um, and actually, I've got to say, I'm, I'm proud to wear this. I, I think the brand NTH, you know, their offerings are so cool that I, they stand on their own. It, it has enough of its own individual character while still honoring the legends that it's so, you know, obviously inspired by. I love those chamfered edges. I love the color. It's certainly going to be on my wrist a lot during the summer. It's a very lively watch and uh, the fact that it's got the spring bars just makes it a joy to, to pair up with different straps. It performs admirably, you know, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, it's, it's just a very lovable piece. What can I say? So let's discuss a little bit of its negatives. Well, there's a part of me that almost wishes it didn't have the snowflake hands because I, I feel at first glance, it's too easy to dismiss as just, uh, you know, a Tudor homage. It, it's, it's more than that. Imagine this with Mercedes hands. Nobody would bat an eyelid. I mean, they're so commonplace on so many watches. Um, but the fact that it, we so closely associate snowflake hands with, of course, Tudor, you know, it gives people the wrong impression. I, it's a shame. I, to me, I don't care. I, I, I love it for what it is. 
I enjoy it for what it is. I understand the concept. You know, I'm not quick to judge or dismiss something like that. It's not a one-on-one -on -one copy. Anybody that knows watches and appreciates watches, and if you if you if you're like me, if you've handled the Seam Masters, if you've handled the the Black Bays and the Tudor Pelagos and all of these watches and you feel this and you wear this, you will know it's it's something totally different. So it's got to be said, it is a bit of a negative. Would I have still bought it if it had a different hands? Yeah, probably. I, you know, but guys, I, I buy watches for enjoyment. I don't buy watches for any other reason, really. I like the hands. I, functionally, they serve a purpose. And um, like I said, it's my it's my sleeping watch. Yeah, and you guys know I can't I can't go diving um, because of my lungs. But yeah, so um, I enjoy it for what it is, and I think that's an important distinction to make. So the negative, yeah, I that's pretty much uh, I had to address that. My second negative, I would love to see something engraved on the case back. I think Chris could have taken this watch to that next level, but I understand, you know, it's got to uh, stay within budget. Incredible value for money, I've got to say. Uh, another little negative, well, is the Miyota 9015 a bit of a predictable choice? Yeah, you could say that, but again, it serves its purpose. It's a tool watch. It's a robust, reliable movement. What more could you want? Oh, maybe, you know, I would have I've loved to see the uh, the bracelet taper. Um, it's just a little bit too big and heavy for me. Um, but that's, again, my preference. I, I re guys, I'm really <laughs> struggling to find any negatives apart from those. It's an outstanding, outstanding watch. Absolute pure class. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I had such fun wearing this in England. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I, I can definitely say, hand on heart, it's the best automatic um, micro brand dive watch out there uh, at that price range. And I, I think, uh, you know, I mentioned it uh, in the unboxing and uh, during my last state of the collection. Held the title, the thinnest automatic 300 meter diver at the time of its release whether it still holds that achievement who knows but it's certainly something to be proud of so what other watches can you can you say that, that under a thousand dollars that can boast that very very cool and i'm definitely going to be watching nth closely in years to come so yeah good luck to nth good luck to chris uh, shout out to uh, my good friend john keel there i'll leave all the links and everything below but yeah a very very welcomed addition to my collection absolutely loving it let me know your thoughts queries comments opinions all the rest of it below uh, thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and as always guys i'll catch you in the next one okay ciao